happiness is success. That's a really interesting key point, isn't it? So, although people before a degree and during it might be questioning the value of a degree in terms of its financial exchange, like it's going to cost me 40 grand and is it going to be worth it? I don't hear many people after a degree or several years after a degree saying they didn't think it was worth it. So it seems to me like it takes a little bit of hindsight to kind of get the value. So the stage that you're at in your degree at the moment, as I've always described, the degree kind of goes like a bit of a wobbly first year, second year, I'm not really sure why I'm here, placement, mm, and then the third year just kind of goes woo at the end, which is the bit you're in now. And for me, there's something about, like most of my students that I'm talking to this week, the conversation is about project management and stress management. So it's like suddenly, it's well, the week before Easter, it's all just kicked in. The finishing line is not quite in sight, but it will be the other side of the Easter break. Less than two months, it'll be done and dusted, it'll all be gravy, and you'll be out the other side of it all, being a proper grown up, deciding what to do with your life. I mean, that's a really big thing. So, like hand learning to manage a project, like I, I don't think that's that different whether you're doing like Safi's friend over there's doing pharmacy or you're doing media. I would imagine it's pretty similar on almost any degrees. Suddenly you've got quite a lot of plates to juggle all at once, and you've got to work out how to do it. So if you're a woman, you can think about lots of things all at once, but you go a bit mad. And if you're a bloke, you kind of have to do things faster, more efficiently in a sequence and try and not just kind of close down, very simplistically, oh, that's a cliche thing. But, um, so like working with, you know, if you walk into any film, TV, festival office, the first thing you'll see is a massive whiteboard on the wall. And there'll be somebody in the office who knows what is going on on that whiteboard, and then lots of other people who know little bits of it. But if you're the person who can see the big picture and go into the little detail but hold the big picture. That's what makes a project manager or a director or producer and enables you to have that kind of level of responsibility that is likely to give you quite a lot of fulfillment and better pay. But then there's another level that's going on which is managing your own emotions. So the t I've, got, I've had to get a box of tissues into my office this week because it's that, it's that week, it just kicks in. Suddenly people are just like, oh, it's, just, it's just too much, I just haven't got enough time. It's all mounted up at once. How, how has this semester gone so quickly? It's nearly Easter, we're nearly finished, and it's like, I'm only just getting started. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know it feels like that. And it's always like that. But there is something that comes out of that for me that, if you can get it, how to manage your own stress and emotional stuff, and the practical stuff at this point in time, like for the next few weeks, it, it honestly is like learning to ride a bike. You only have to get it for a week or two of your life and then you'll forget about it and you go and do something else with your life and then it could be a year later, it could be five years later, you suddenly end up in that position again and you suddenly click into that gear and you go, ah, oh, I've got that gear. That I've, I didn't know it was a gear. I thought that was just a thing but it's actually like a gear that you can just go cha-ching and then you're in it. And then it's like, oh wow, that's really, that seems like quite an abstract thing to say about the value of a degree, but I really think that is something that is part of the, this bit of the third year. If you crack it now, it's worth more than whether you get a 2-2 two -two or a 2-1 or a first. So that, that bit that allows you to project manage and self-manage your own emotions is really interesting because for me that is the real value of a degree whatever the subject you do if you can crack that and then so like if you can manage just the project management bit but not the emotional bit I 
my guess is that that could make you professionally quite successful. Not necessarily happy though. But if you can manage both, even if you don't have a brilliant professional trajectory straight away, my guess is that you'd be happier. So there's something about managing your own emotions that somebody was saying to me yesterday about she's chosen a topic that's very close to her heart and so and she's got a situation around family where if things kick off in this situation in a family it's so close to a project that it makes it really difficult for her to do a project it's too close to home literally and i was like yeah but that's amazing because if you can do that like you care so much about this subject and the situation that you're in but if you can work with it, then that suddenly clicks you into a different gear, which is, I really, really care, but I can somehow slightly distance myself from my feelings. Well, that is like teaching, social work, youth work, counselling. There's loads of jobs where you have to really care, but not be at the effect of caring. I mean, that's quite an abstract thing as well to think about but I think that is an amazing skill to develop I have to develop that like because I care about all you lot and I, I worry about people a lot so then I just have to be sure that I've done the most that I can do to help people and then if they don't take me up on it I've, I've done it I've done my bit I'm not gonna go home and beat myself up about it do you know what I mean I don't take I don't carry it home so that's for me something I've learned about partitioning off. Like I come into work as soon as I, as soon as I get on the bus, I'm starting to think, oh, what about Samsung? It all starts flooding in all the people that I'm worried about, like you, you know, and various other people. Mm. But then I think, well, I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm available. So if somebody doesn't take me up on it, Maybe they've got something else to do, or maybe they've got something better to do, or maybe they just isn't that important to them at the moment. Either whatever that is, that's their story, not mine. And that's made me, I don't know about more successful, it was definitely made me happier. That combination of practical project management skills and managing my own emotional stuff. So then, like Carolina was saying in her interview, Um, you know, you don't really get a sense of it. So she's four years later, wasn't she? Now she can really, she can see it much more clearly how she's got to where she is now, which is now doing the PhD, teaching video production at Sussex. You know, professionally looking great. She's got a great life. She seems pretty happy. So that's quite a long time afterwards. I think Patience is a big thing as well. I think that's a part of the issue of our society now is Everybody just wants everything now and then they think well I just paid 40 grand on my degree So I want to walk out into a happy professional fulfilling job. I Don't think that was ever the case really. It's pretty rare, but if you're in it three or four years later and you're in your 20s then I think th You know, that's a that's a that's a good job it was interesting as well listening to what Carolina said about um, what she saw about my teaching style and that, you know, that the feedback that I'd given her at the time, sometimes she hadn't really liked it, or not really liked me at the time when I gave her it. And now she can see that all I was interested in doing was moving her towards a potential. Now, whether she'd be the same kind of teacher or not, I don't know. But I, I learnt that from producers who, if they liked the radio interview you'd just done, or if they liked what you'd done, they never said, brilliant, that's brilliant, well done. Oh, that's a lovely interview you've done, thanks. They just put it out on the radio, didn't say anything. If they didn't like it, they'd physically cut it up with the razor blade in front of my eyes and throw it on the floor. And I'd be watching my Ramones interview being thrown on the floor cut up with a razor blade and then now that's feedback they said give me a three minute tape and I'd given them a five minute tape so they can't say we told you three minutes we've got loads of other things in the show just because you think you're important and it's you know so you kind of have to get over yourself all the time of like yeah but that's just the Ramones and I did it it's mine 
So then I'd start developing coping strategies of like, well, make sure I've backed up the tape for my own copy so they're not throwing the master copy on the floor. Mm. And then get it that when I listen back to it, it's like, oh yeah, that is better. Less is more. Well, I don't really know what they did. I didn't really know how to do it. They just chopped two minutes out of something that I thought was great and it's better. So can I not take it personally and learn from that craft that they've taken 20 years to learn how to take that two minutes out? I mean, it's weird. So many things are really abstract like that that make you better or make you more successful. And I kind of think like being happy is a little bit like that as well. It's sometimes it's editing the bits of yourself out that aren't really very helpful and developing something else over here that might be a more useful thing. I mean, it seems like what you've got from your project so far is, if your question is, is doing a degree worth it? It, it seems fairly conclusive at the moment that the answer is still yes. Mm. That's what I'm getting. If, if the question is, does doing a degree make you more likely to have a successful professional career in the field that you work in, I still think the answer seems to be coming out as a yes from what you've got. And we already know it's possible to create a successful career without doing a degree. Some people do do that. And maybe they're better in some ways or different. But um, I think something that needs interrogating that you haven't got into yet is this thing about commodifying education and making it a consumer pro product that you've paid 40 grand therefore you should be given something for it without necessarily doing anything i think that is a tricky thing about the times that we live in yeah. people people are expecting some to be given something because they think they're paying for it like a consumer i think that's a bit messed up it's not yeah, no, I agree. Right. And then, you know, like learning to play the bass and joining a band or doing what you're doing now and just keep just keeping at it. There's something about having a discipline of learning something and then keep just keep doing it, keep doing it, that you, you get better. And then when you get good at something, that makes you happy. I think that does make everybody happy. If you do something, you think, I'm feeling like I'm quite good at this now. That was like six months ago. I was a bit rubbish at it, and now I've done it a bit. I'm liking that. So, and we're in media. When we're talking about media studies or, or performance or creativity, you know, you learn to play the bass, join a band, play a gig, and then you're looking at people, you know, either nodding along or maybe dancing along to what you're doing, and then suddenly, oh, that's quite a magical thing. When you see, look out at people, and you think, "Wow, they, they haven't walked off. That you know, they're enjoying it. Dancing, you know, play music, and somebody dancing to it is wonderful experience. But same as making a video and somebody watching it and going, "All oh, right, mm, that's that's really interesting. That's made me think slightly differently." I think any form of creativity, if you can put it out there in the world, and somebody in some way benefits from it, is incredibly satisfying. So. Just yeah, yeah. So satisfaction feels like something in between success and happiness. It's like a halfway point, or maybe that's the sort of axis of like when I go home from a good day's work, I don't feel like happy or successful, but I do feel I do check myself as I walk out at the end of a day and go, Am I good with what I did today? Yeah, I am. I feel content about that. I've done a good day's work and then I can go home and go to the pub and feel like I've earned a good session with my mates or whatever. And um, that doesn't ever seem to have worn off for me. You know, at the age of 51, I still, I still want that kind of working hard to earn your leisure time or doing something difficult to earn the time after it seems to be a recipe for kind of 
building your self-esteem and enjoy and really enjoying your life if a lot of the creative industries including bands have a tendency to celebrate before they've done the thing that they're meant to be doing you know i mean being in a band is very difficult in, in lots of ways that are very abstract as well epic amounts of waiting around epic amounts of fit, faffing around with kit and carrying stuff up downstairs and waiting again and sound checks with annoying sound engineers and you know no rider and you know whatever whatever it is that's going on and then suddenly everybody's looking at you you've got to pull it out of the bag for half an hour and then 10 minutes later you were just waiting again carrying stuff around and I mean it's enough to drive anybody to drugs being in a band or touring particularly but it's the same in film and TV and you know I just endlessly waiting around for somebody to do something and something to start and then just as you're about to nod off suddenly everybody's looking at you you've got to pull it out of the bag can't get it wrong not available to get it wrong or be ill or too tired or any of that stuff so it's a very strange world but it's like a metaphor for uni though hey it feels like a metaphor for uni just well like three years you're just kind of dilling around and then suddenly this is the point where we're like yeah. in the spotlight and it's like oh yeah okay now i've got to pull it out the bag and make make something that's it and i think it's a gear I think if once you've done that, ah, oh, did pull it out of the bag, then you kind of know that you can do it. And it doesn't mean you'll always be able to do it, but I've always sort of, I've always been a, a part of that work hard, play hard club where, you know, at work I want to just do the, I want to do the do. Let's just do it. Get on with it. And then at the end of the day, it's like let's go to the pub and talk about something else. I don't want to go to the pub and talk about work for very long. Yeah. Half an hour of debriefing to get it off your chest, but then that's something else then. And then if the pub happens to turn into an all-night session and you crawl home on your hands and knees at five in the morning, but you've got to be in again at eight o'clock to do the do again, then that's where the test starts to kick in. But if you can, it's not a very healthy lifestyle and it's not very sustainable for a very long period of time but it, it can be immensely enjoyable creative industries or being in a band or all that stuff it's great so but nobody really t teaches you that that's not something you're going to be taught at university how to work hard play hard mm. something you have to kind of discover along the way it is it yeah it is some people can do it some people can't some people are very good at either working hard or playing hard, but the people generally who can work hard and play hard are the ones that start to come through as being successful in the creative industries. Or you can be somebody who can work hard and work hard around people who are playing hard. That's a whole section of the creative industries, tour managers, <laughs> you know, interesting people people who are endlessly scooping up useless drug addled musicians and throwing them onto stage peeling them off people so mate seriously i need to take you home or you know what well, all that stuff or where's the where's the bass player where is he um you know endlessly sober when everybody else is partying waiting to drive everybody home or you know ro you know roadies being a roadie man that is a hard job loading stuff in, being there for the sound check, never getting any praise, the band do all the stuff and then, you know, as the band come off and everybody's walking off, your job starts again for another two or three hours of de-rigging and putting the stuff in and then if you're lucky, you might get to go and join the band's party when people have been partying for three hours by the time you get there, they're halfway done and you just, you're just stone cold sober mm. and knackered. I mean, there's look at so many weird jobs in media, but it's just, I think it's a temperament thing as well. I mean, I think that's part of being successful and happy. Is you know, you can have things that you're rubbish at and things that you're great at, but I do think there is a temperament factor, which again, I kind of mess around with that a little bit with the Belbin stuff in the first year, and kind of come back to it a little bit around roles, but. You have to work out what your temperament is. If you're too much of a worrier, you, there's some certain things you can't do. If you're not enough of a worrier, there's certain things that you can't do. If you're really not a morning person, it's never going to happen. 
there's certain things you can't do, but there's certain things you can do. DJs and musicians are conventionally not morning people, you know, and that's like, well, it's just half a day that isn't, that doesn't exist, that bit of the day, unless you stay up, but, you know, it's, it's just, you're not getting up and seeing anything between nine and sort of mid-afternoon, <laughs> it's just isn't there. You start having breakfast at mid-afternoon mid and then thinking about what you're doing and then the middle of your day can be somewhere between 10 at night and 2 in the morning. I mean, like that work hard, play hard. But, um, that it's just like work hard. I don't know, I think it it's like work hard is like being successful. Play hard is being happy. And finding that balance between work hard and play hard. It is, but it's not, yeah. But it's not, like... So let me just say that to camera, what you just said, that's interesting. So, work, being able to work hard as being successful and being able to play hard as being happy, that's an interesting uh, way of looking at it, except that there's only so hard you can work where the only way you can improve is to relax into it and have better breaks and look after yourself better that's what makes it sustainable and then actually playing hard enjoying playtime is a surprisingly difficult thing to do it should be in theory a very easy thing if you're in a band to enjoy you know great the girlies come to your dressing room and want to have sex with you people bring you whatever you want I mean that in theory should be endlessly satisfying. Well, we know it isn't. We know that there's a very short burnout time in that because it's not sustainable. It's, it's exciting to experience for a while, but it isn't going to make you happy. It's going to make, it's going to entertain you and be a bit thrilling for a limited time period. So there's always a, there's a balance. It's like going on holiday. The amount of people come back from holiday more stressed out than they went. It's not that easy to have a great time on holiday. Mm. It's really not. It's like traveling the world, I want to go traveling the world. It's really, really stressful a lot of the time, not knowing where you are or what the hell this money is in your hand or don't know, I don't know what's going on. You know, it's, it's complicated. So for me, it all comes back to like, can you work, you, all you're ever working with is you, yourself. What are you like? What do you like? What don't you like? Can you do what you like more and less of what you don't like? That seems to me a pretty simple recipe for success and happiness. That's how I look at it. It's really simple now. If I don't like doing something, I just really don't do it. And if I do like doing something, I do it. And then there are certain things that I have to do that I don't like, that I'll do a little bit if the deal's okay, but not that much seems so complicated but I think it's as simple as that yeah. but then you look at you know we're very western in our thinking about it you know you look at somewhere where they've got no money and people are doing something they definitely don't want to do doing some menial job on a pittance and then they look really happy because they've got something else going on so then we, we don't really get that what's that about because we're still stuck in this Sex, drugs, rock and roll, fame, success, money, good looks, all this stuff that we're obsessed with in the West doesn't tend to bring happiness and fulfilment as far as I can tell. But it, it can enhance it if you've got it going on already, maybe.